Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Alright, so this is the brass lens that I bought about 2 years ago. I bought this from eBay for about USD $88. And I have never um, shoot with it yet. So I thought for this video, I will fit this onto a lens board and uh, do a shoot with it. It's only $88 because this is of the rapid uh, rectilinear lens design. Uh, more suitable for landscape. Okay, so this lens has no brand on it. So I guess it's one of those uh, generic make lenses. This focal lens is 18 inches. Aperture is f7. This lens will cover up to 11 by 14, but I will use it on my 8 by 10 camera. Right, so this is um, for now. This kind of lens is cheaper compared to the uh, Pre uh, Presswell lens design. Uh, previously, I did a video on my Presswell lens. You can click on the link on the top right hand corner if you have not watched that. So for the rectilinear design, it's a symmetric uh, lens design. Um, let me just open up the lens element. So when we say symmetric, that means that they are of the same uh, lens element. Huh? I put the graphic to show you the design. And then we have the lens barrel here. There is a waterhouse stop slot here where you can slot in the waterhouse slot to control the aperture. Otherwise, this is about f7. I do not have the waterhouse stop, so I guess I will shoot at f7 for landscape, right? Alright, so this is my prep gel lens versus this um, rectilinear lens. So when I got this lens, it actually comes with the mounting ring uh, or the mounting frame. So it's much easier for me to um, use it on the lens board. Right? So I can just mount the ring on the lens board and then just simply uh, screw it in. But for this lens, um, they, it doesn't come with such a ring. Right? So I have to find a way to mount this on the lens board. So today I'm not going to make a new lens board and obviously like, this one doesn't fit well. So this one, the mounting ring screw track is too big for this lens cell. So I will find a way to adapt uh, this lens to use this lens board by um, 3D printing uh, another ring and attach it from behind. So this is the 3D uh, retaining ring that I've printed. So what I've done is I've removed the front lens element and then mount the lens from the back. Okay, and this retaining ring will lock it from behind. Right. I will tighten the ring to the board by using a few screw. Alright, so this is just a temporary way of uh, mounting the lens. Okay, so I have uh, mounted the lens as you can see. Right, so three screw to tighten the 3D printed ring to the back of the lens board. So the drill hole is uh, quite big for the lens barrier. So that may cause some light leak. So I have a piece of um, black, black uh, felt that I will just push it into the slot. That will be a form of light proofing. And uh, that should prevent any light leak.
So this since this is a barrel lens, there is no shutter built in. So I have to make use of my baby speed graphic shutter. Basically, this is a focal plane shutter used in the smaller speed graphic. Um, this was uh, gifted to me by a friend, so I have DIY it to make it fit into my 8x10 and then the lens will attach to the front of uh, the shutter. Right? Right, to control the shutter speed, uh, we have to set two things. Uh, one is this winding knob and then the other one is this uh, number here. So for 1 of 15, I will set this to 2, which I already did. So for this winding knob, I have to wind it to A. So just turn it, now it's T, that means for time, A is, is what I need, right? So A and the number 2, that will give me 1 or 15. So to trip the shutter, what I need, I'm just going to use my finger and hopefully very steadily trip it, right? So when you see that turn, it's opening the shutter, right? Okay, so if you need to shoot again, you just need to... Turn it to A again. Right. I'm going to load in my film and then take a shot. Okay, so I processed the first piece of film. Let's see how it looks. Inside is just some water to wash away the fixer. Da -da -da -da. Okay, this is how it looks. So this is the result of the first negative. For the Shanghai 100 8x10, um, the base fox seems to be quite heavy, as you can see here. The base compared to the white of the light box. Okay. But I guess we can process that in the software, or if we are doing contact print, we can do some contrast adjustment. Okay, and this is the second negative um, again you can see that the base fault is quite heavy that's why the whole negative look quite yellowish so this is the second negative it's a bit thin right um, I think but I think the leaf are still well exposed so I'll convert these two negative into positive and uh, show you in the video. Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it, and finally do subscribe to my channel and I see you at my next video. Take care. Bye.